Тобто... Where is my camera? Uh, hey, uh, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, so sorry about that. So apparently my phone thinks it is smarter than me. In fact, my phone thinks it makes uh, rules. So the fact that I'm on Zoom, my phone thinks, hey, you're on Zoom. I'm connected to your computer. Therefore, I'm going to steal the Zoom. So sorry about that. Now who's calling me? There is nobody I want to talk to when I'm talking to Rhino. So any, uh, so let that be a note. If anyone ever decides to call me, just call after 1015 or before 955 because Rhino is all I care about. Um, so yeah, okay, cool. Sorry, I'm a little frazzled because I'm like, I was just writing a long um, message and I saw the time and I was like, you know what, I could do it. So, uh, okay. Huh, good morning from Canada. Ian, I gotta tell you, Ian and Frida, well, good morning, Carl. But Ian and Frida are part of our uh, partnership plan, in which case they go ahead and they have affiliate links and they promote Rhino and they have the number one and two conversion rates. They are, along with a couple others, but they lead the class as being uh, really the most, um, the most observably successful brand ambassadors, if, if that makes sense. So um, I just want you guys to know, I, I look at the numbers every day and I appreciate you. All right, what is on the docket for today? <sighs> a couple of things. So one, our email today was designed <clears throat> to go ahead and nudge into Rhino Bucks. There's a lot of new people in our ecosystem. And like, like we've said, uh, we are leading with Rhino Street because it's, it makes sense, right? That we have all the AI integrations that everyone's going uh, crazy about we have the actual permissions to put it in our product right so you don't have to go to chat gpt and get a login or, or whatever you need to do you can just come on rhino in fact it actually is involved in the searches uh, everything that you get is really really high level um so we always want to lead with rhino street and in which case when the individual says all right i want to be a part of rhino street then they opt in and now they're involved in an email sequence that says okay welcome you know if you haven't listed your business do it the next one being, hey, if you haven't listed your business, do it. Or um, if you have, uh, certainly suggest someone else. Maybe maybe there's other people that would that would benefit, right? Then the next one is, hey, do you want to know how we're funded? Check out Rhino Bucks. And then on and on, it allows you to be an affiliate. Like there's a whole bunch of really good things that come down the pipe. So to be able to bring someone in uh, for a free offer that is high value, and of course, you know, everyone here knows how high value it is because um, we've built it, right? It's it's all invented. It's um, and we've never charged anyone anything for it. So it's, it really is so super special. And everyone thinks we're crazy that we just give it away. But you know what? I've been called worse. Actually, I think I've been called worse this morning. I don't even know. Um, so we're very, you know, we're, we're pleased with that. Um, but also we want to make sure that people understand Rhino Bucks is really something that they should be a part of. And when I, you know, as I've had the time to spend to talk about it and you know, because in the beginning, when you talk about Rhino Bucks to someone, it's all right. Well, how do you explain it? Oh, it's a, it's just crypto, and but it's safe. But how is it safe? But you know, it it, it goes up because people buy it, and they're like, well, I don't even like no. And then one of the individuals from Rhino, uh, Maurice, actually, uh, RVP, right? Uh, Maurice said one day he's like, he wrote he wrote like a little bit of a copy for it, and he goes, yeah, it's the first subscription based crypto which allows to really diminish the volatility because everyone that is buying is continuing to buy. You see, value is perceived. An economy is built on trust and confidence, right? Because you're not going to invest in a new business if you believe uh, there's gonna be a recession next year. But if you believe that there's gonna be a boom next year, you do invest in the new business. In that example, nothing changed about today. Today is exactly the same. But yet the behavior of people is dramatically opposite. One person wants to start a new business and invest and hire all these employees, while the other person doesn't want to do that. Now, when you take that and multiply it out through the economy, that is what makes the economy. The common denominator being trust, which is why when President Trump was president, everyone, oh, he lies all the time. He's factually incorrect. Yeah, he knew that. Everyone knew that. In fact, everyone that supported Trump knew 
that he was factually incorrect about everything he said. But what we also knew was he was directionally accurate. And what we mean by that is, yeah, he would say 50 million people are going to be hired tomorrow. Everyone knew that wasn't true. But if 100,000 people got hired tomorrow, did anyone ever, hey, Justin, did anyone ever say, yeah, well, you said 50 million and only 100,000? They would say, no, 100,000 100, still really good. Good job. And when he was able to create that performance record, people started having trust. They started saying, you know what? This guy is a cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but he has demonstrated that he will, by hook or by crook, support this economy and make it go forward. If he has to come out tomorrow and say that Mexico or Spain or this or that, um, better give him a billion dollars and start investing or he's going to tariff them to the moon and back, everyone knew that's crazy. Like You would never do that. But guess who didn't know that? Spain and Mexico and all those other countries. They're like, that guy's a madman. He, he might actually do it. In fact, there was a conversation with uh, Vladimir Putin and actually Xi of China, where Trump said to Putin, uh, I forgot what it was. It was it was something. And he goes, if you even think about doing that, I will nuke Moscow and you will never, ever see anything in Moscow ever again. And he said the same thing to Xi. He goes, Shanghai will be a thing of the past. I will send so many missiles. I will blow up all of Shanghai. And these leaders, Putin and Xi said, well, we didn't really believe he would do it but we weren't 100% positive, so we held back. And the point being, when you're a little unpredictable, that works in your benefit. But more so than that, when everyone that is observing you sees that they can trust the direction that you're moving things, they participate. And that is, in a nutshell, how Rhino operates, how Rhino Bucks moves. Because anybody can take a look at that chart and say, wow, for literally three months, it's gone up every single day. In fact, there's only been three days that it's been down, and that was because <clears throat> we were waiting for Coinbase to release our funds, because Coinbase holds your funds for seven days. Now, obviously, we have a, a, a nice track record and pipeline so far that every day there's more money being released, so we could always go ahead and support the coin. That's a good thing. And it is, and it is, See, it, it, a lot of it has to do with trust and confidence like an economy. So, for instance, if somebody looks at Rhino Bucks and says, yeah, well, it only goes up because people buy it. And if one day everyone sells it, it's going to go down. Well, duh, right? Like any you can say that about anything in the entire world. If everyone decided to sell Microsoft tomorrow, it would go down. Duh. But it's in that it's in that obviousness of that individual sentence that deludes them to think that they're sounding smart, right? Yeah, well, what happens if everyone sells it? What are you gonna do then? You see how someone that says that actually might be confused to think that they're smart? Well, they're not, because you could say that sentence about everything. If everyone decides to sell Apple, it goes down, right? Like that's normal. But why wouldn't everyone sell Apple? Well, because they have a trust in Apple. You don't know what Apple's gonna do in five years from now, you have no clue but you trust based on their track record that they are going to produce something. And even those that people say, well, Anthony, they have all this money in the bank. They, they have all these products. They have these recurring revenues. Yeah, great. What would happen if they caught the CEO diddling a little boy? What would happen? Everything would go down. Nobody would keep the product any longer. Nobody would X, Y, and Z, right? And let me just say, obviously, Tim Cook is amazing and doesn't do that, right? And we're not suggesting he does. But the point being, you don't know what's going to happen, but you trust the brand. You say, well, I know Tim Cook is a great guy. I don't know him personally, but I don't think he would ever do that. Therefore, I could take that risk off the table. Therefore, I could stay invested. Now, when Maurice said it was a subscription service, it really caught my attention because to me, it's we kind of made it like a 401k, right? Like you, you just keep adding a little bit and a little bit, and that little bit allows you never to be um, caught off guard, right? Like you're never, you're never, what's it you're you're never um i don't even know what i'm thinking of but you're never in a bad position because if it's one dollar a week or five dollars a week you can obviously and, and again i don't mean to blanket everyone but for the most part the majority of people can sustain that right especially in america where we're very privileged and i want to tell everyone i understand that and i accept that i know that i'm not a spoiled american i i really believe we're in the best country in the world i can't i can't prove it i haven't been to many others but i I take a look around and I believe we're privileged. Let that be that. But if I, well, not but, but that being said, 
if I'm on a plan of a dollar a week, well, that doesn't really that doesn't really break my bank account. A dollar a week, um, my son could do a dollar a week, right? But what does it do for the company? What does it do for Rhino? Well, not really much. A dollar a week equals fifty-two dollars a year. So, what can you buy with fifty-two dollars? Well, you can. I guess you can go to you could order a pizza. Uh, in fact, you could order maybe two pizzas, a, a big bottle of Coke, like a two-liter bottle. Uh, maybe get some breadsticks and tip the driver. And I that might actually even be more than fifty-two dollars. So, from the perspective of Rhino. Wouldn't it behoove us? Wouldn't it be a smart business decision for us to say, all right, we only want people that could do a thousand a week, five thousand a week? How about we don't even do the weekly thing? Because when people see weekly uh, re weekly payments, they think bills, and when they cut back, they're gonna, you know what? Let's just go ahead and get on the phone and and do aggressive sales and get everyone to do ten thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense. We'd actually have a lot more money. But what would happen? Well, when you go ahead and ask someone for $10,000, you're taking a sizable portion of their money. Can that person do another 10,000? Maybe. Can you do another 10,000? Maybe. Can you do another 10,000? Less likely. Can you do another 10,000? Less likely. And progressively gets less likely. Now, what if that individual gets into a pinch and, and needs to stop doing it? Well, does that hurt you that you now have a person that was giving you 10,000 that doesn't give it to you? Yeah, it does. What if that person gets in a pinch and then goes ahead and sells off his 10,000, 10,000, 10,000? So presumably, maybe $40,000 worth of Rhino. Can that hurt Rhino? Yeah. Can that bring Rhino down? Yeah. So can Rhino come down in price due to the financial misfortunes of one person if built in a fashion that it makes business sense to bring in big clients with big money? Yes. We'll take a look at the stock market. That's how it's built, right? Big investors come in, they buy it up. And then when they have financial difficulty, when the economy goes into recession, when whenever something happens, they then sell. But because there's such a big portion of the buy-in, it really moves things dramatically. Rhino is the opposite. We purposely do not let anyone go ahead and buy that much of anything. In fact, the plans you'll see are $1, $5, $10, like they're small amounts. Now, actually, we just put in a thousand plan. Um, and only because I've got, you know, I've got to know Rhino more and no one's on the thousand plan, right? But whenever we have one of these big events, there's people that come out and they do $5,000 worth, $8,000 worth, ten. So there are people that have money and every time they say the same thing to me, they go, Ant, well, I don't want to, you know, I want, I want to own 10,000 worth, but I don't want to, you know, do 500 a week in perpetuity because the price of the coin keeps going up. I want to own it at this price. So we understand it, but at the same time, if we did that, to everyone for like say 100,000, what would happen? Well, they would own it there and now that now we're vulnerable to them. Right now, Rhino's not vulnerable to anyone because everyone is on a subscription agreement. Everyone is doing a dollar a week, $5 a week, $10 a week, which is why our numbers are still relatively low. And anyone would say, well, your numbers are what? Like seven, 8,000 a week. Like you've kind of stagnated. You're actually up at 9,000, you came down. Yeah, that's fine. Because the value of Rhino is that when we go ahead and bust through, when we go ahead and get that viral moment, that scalable moment, when we go ahead and fix the marketing and actually really broaden it out, what's going to happen? Well, we have the proof of concept, right? Everyone that's been in Rhino for a dollar a week, $5 a week has stayed. In fact, we're at 352 members right now. I believe we have 23 canceled accounts, 23. Meaning we could be at 375, right? But we're at 352. Do you know how impressive that retention rate is when you're talking about individuals that are investing every single week, every single week, nonstop, every single week. And anyone that's been here knows how many um, issues, how many challenges we've had. The bot just started working, but it's it's having a little difficulty with some people with a certain wallet address. Um, you know, our marketing strategy constantly is is evolving. It, it's fluid. Um, the liquidity pool in our pancake swap is at fifty two thousand. I really wanted it at a hundred thousand. Um, so there there's things. So even though things have not gone perfect. Everyone is still stuck in it because everyone sees the vision in front, which is the proof of concept that if we can broaden it out, there is no 
there is, there is not a high percentage of behavior, in which case those that join Rhino say, hey, I joined at $5, I joined at $10, three weeks later, oh great, I made, I don't know, 10% on 40 bucks, let me go sell it. In fact, if you take a look at the daily sales in Rhino, we're averaging, I think like $700 worth is sold every day. And of course, we're there to buy it, right? Like, like when people take a look at Rhino, we are buying 700 to 1000 to $1,500 worth of people's sales every single day. That's a lot of money. And we're always buying more than people are selling because the coin keeps going up. So is it true to say that anybody that has ever sold Rhino has made a bad decision? Now, let's take out what they sold it for, right? Maybe they needed to send a check to their son's, their child's school, right? Like there's reasons why you sell things. But if the reason was because you believe that you were securing the best profit possible and you believe that you were selling at the highest price possible, were you wrong? Yeah. Now, I'm never going to tell anyone you need to buy, you need to sell. That's, that's not my job. I'm not an investment advisor. I'm sharing what Rhino is. I'm invested in Rhino. My entire net worth is in Rhino, right? But can I say objectively that anyone that's ever bought is profitable? Yes. Anyone ever in the entire history of Rhino has ever bought is profitable. Yes. Because that's the definition of an all-time high. It's higher than it's ever been. So if you've ever bought, it's higher, right? Can I also say that anyone that's ever sold made a mistake? Yes, because anyone that ever sold, it's higher than where you sold it at. Therefore, if you would have sold it today versus wherever you sold it, you would have made more money. And making more money is the goal of investment, right? That's pretty powerful. There's not another anything on the face of this planet that can say everyone, 100% of people involved are happy and made the right decision. And 100% of people that sold are regretful and they made the wrong decision. And it is that that is our secret sauce, right? So when we spoke about Trump and trust and blah, 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 a lot of people say to me, Anthony, um, in fact, one of our rhinos said we need to start slowing down the rate of growth, that we need to start slowing down the price appreciation because it's moving too fast. Because that is someone that's looking long-term and says, hey, listen, I wanna keep accumulating at these prices. So what is Rhino, right? Well, there's a lot of trust in Anthony, right? Like this is Rhino. Now, of course, we're transparent and show everyone everything and everyone operates and we send out email. So like you can get a really fully formed, educated decision or uh, research of what you're getting into. But at the end of the day, if Anthony is at the helm, you have enough history or enough sample size of Anthony to say, I just trust him. I know that he's going to get it done because I've seen him do it no matter what. And even though, you know, uh, a coin that goes up 77 out of 80 days is ludicrous. Anthony wishes it went up 80 of 80 days. In fact, the three days it didn't go up was because he couldn't, he physically couldn't do anything. He was calling Coinbase. Anyone could say, well, you know, he didn't need, you know, Anthony didn't need it to go up 77 of 80 days. He could have done it for 60 of 80 days. Imagine something that goes up 75% of the time. Would that be impressive? Yeah. Would it be the best available? Yes. So the question then is, well, if he's overachieving things that are already the best available, then it must be something personal and innate in him. It must not be the fact that he's saying, okay, well, this is good enough for them. No, it must be he is looking for something quite larger. And I don't know when the moment's going to happen where somebody of size says, okay, I've seen this, I, I've just, I've seen enough. Like I've seen it go up. It, do we have to go up every day for six months? Do we have to go up every day for two? I don't know the number. I don't know the answer. But I can tell you that when that happens, where we have that moment where somebody takes notice of, of, of influence and says, okay, there's this thing called Rhino that's gone up like 900 days in a row. I need to know what it is. That's the day that everyone will look back at what we're doing today and say, well, did it go up 900 days because it was like nobody knew about it because it was just by accident? Um, oh, no, it didn't. It went up because they literally worked every day to create this result. 
So do in that moment, do, will the people have trust that that result is going to continue? Yes. So when that result is believed to continue, that is the trust in the asset. Therefore, that's the moment where everyone that's in it today says, this is what we were waiting for, because we were here today and you two years from now are just finding out about it. And now you're finding out about how much we know and how much we built and how this is all purposely and designed to happen, in which case your trust is our work. And that's when we go. Now, do I think we're going to wait two years for that? No, I, like I'll, I'll like jump out a roof. No, I'm kidding. I'm not really going to do that. But the goal is for something much sooner than that. But when someone asks us what's Rhino, how's Rhino Bucks created? That's the 21 minute version. <laughs> uh, Dr. Smith is being dependent on a single human, a good thing. Why not automate it and run it without any human? Um, so I don't think being dependent on a single human is ever a good thing for anything. But I also think there's no way around that. Like Tesla is Elon Musk. Apple was Steve Jobs. Berkshire Hathaway was Warren Buffett. Microsoft was Bill Gates. You know, you could go on and on and on. And how do you automate Bill Gates, right? Like you, you can't. Um, how do you automate Steve Jobs? You can't, they're just a special human being. They came down and they were able to do something other people can't. Um, so I will always be right here. I will always write your email. I will always be live. I will always be, oh, thanks, Aunt. I'll always be uh, um, right there in emails. I, I, I was emailing everyone all night. I will always, always, always be right here. Um, and when things are going good, I'll be right here. When things are, yeah, right, really good. When things are not going great, guess what? I'll be right here. And if something ever doesn't go well, I'll be right here exactly at that moment and we'll figure it out together. And it is Rhino that had built the trust that if something didn't go well, <clears throat> I don't think people would be able to pitchfork at my house. They would say, okay, like it didn't go well. And how are we gonna fix it? Let's go do it. Um, and that's called uh, reinventing the world, right? So let's go do it. Oh my God, I went over. You know what? Actually, tomorrow I'm only gonna do 10 minutes. Only 10 minutes, only 10 minutes. I promise, I promise, I promise. So tomorrow we're not going to have as much fun as we did today, but uh, I appreciate the compliment on the presentation today. As everyone can see, it's all heart. Um, and that's it. So I love you and I will see you tomorrow. Bye everyone.